Thank you to PCBWay for sponsoring this video and providing the PCBs here that I am hoping are going to be the solution to an issue that I've been having, especially in the featherweight robots, for a little while. These are power distribution boards. Maybe. Hello everybody, I am Ben from Team Panic. So, what exactly are these? Well, as you can see, they are a PCB uh, that have some very, very large holes in them. These holes are specifically for plugging in XT60 connectors. And you can see that this is done in such a way that the XT60 comes out the back and you can literally just solder this right to the board. That is the idea in any way. Uh, so that there is the battery connection. Then we've got this one here, which is for the link. And then we've got a whole row that allows for four wheel drive with individual ESCs per drive, uh, and also a weapon of some description. So this is supposed to be a power distribution board uh, for a featherweight. And the reason we're doing this uh, is something that we don't really talk about a lot on this channel. We don't typically talk about wiring. A lot of my build videos, I kind of get to the wiring step and just cut and then the next shot is testing and so forth. But wiring is obviously a thing that is very important in combat robots and well, there is a reason uh, that I don't particularly show the wiring. And to demonstrate why I have uh, brought in Flop, my half of mistakes were made, the multibot, uh, and in here you can kind of see the reason. There is a lot of wiring and stuff in here. It is not very neat, it is not very tidy. Uh, and my power distribution currently is these two blobs of black tape here which we can actually, we will right here, right now, or well, half a second, pull these out and I will show you what these are uh, because realistically, they work, but they're not great. They're huge. Like this is a very, very large blob of tape and uh, connectors, which is what is in underneath here. Uh, and while again, it does work, it is massive. It takes up so much space in here that I had to fudge a lot of things and they're actually ESCs sitting in under here, under the lift arm, uh, because I didn't have enough space where I wanted them to be. And here is what that tape was hiding. Two M5 bolts with just a whole bunch of uh, eyelet connectors kind of screwed or run through the middle of them. There's literally, it's a tiny, tiny little M5 bolt with an M5 nut on the end. Uh, and that is what was doing our power distribution was this whole lump of wiring. Now, this is actually, I've been using this system for a little while, well actually a decently long while in a bunch of my featherweights. It works pretty well for two wheel drive and weapon because then there's only really four connections on here. Uh, because you've got your power, your power coming in and then your three leads coming out. But uh, with four wheel drive and also a weapon, you then end up with six connections on each and these things just get ridiculously large. Uh, in Strange Young Man, I did something similar, but I actually ran two independent uh, strips or two independent screws basically per side so I could have three on one and three on the other and then connected them with a piece of metal. So there was a piece of metal with two bolts running through it with three of these connectors each. So this system is just big, uh, which means that the whole robot has to be a little bit bigger to accommodate and it means that, yeah, I'm kind of running, yeah, with more space in the robot than I need to. It's just awkward and clumsy. It also does mean that I've got all of these like tiny little cables around the place that are basically just a cable that run into the connection loops, which is fine, but a lot of the time, like the cables on all of these ESCs and things are long enough anyway. Like this is a huge, huge cable running to my weapon ESC. I didn't need the extra, you know, 20 centimeters or whatever this is that go down to this connection point. So being able to plug the speed controller, straight in to a power distribution board is kind of the goal here. 
because that means I can just like plant this in one spot. It has the link already in it. I can go whack and just plug this in and I don't have any extraneous cable. Uh, and if I need extra cable, then I can make short connectory cables that are the exact length needed for the particular robot in question. There is just one question about are these actually going to work? And the reason there is a question as to if these boards will work or not basically comes down to how electricity is carried through conductors. This here is 12 gram or 12 gauge silicon wire. This is what I currently use in my featherweights to carry around all of that energy. Uh, and it is basically wire in a silicon tube. Now, this has a decent cross section of actual conductor inside and then the sleeve around the edge is silicon so not only can it bend but it can also uh, get up to 200 degrees it's rated at before the silicon will melt and you'll have a problem because wire will poke out and it will contact something else and you'll have a lot of issues so but the thing with this is that this wire is actually thicker than our PCB and the problems kind of start there realistically because uh, conductors, the more conductive material you have, the better they are at being a conductor and passing electricity through. The smaller they are, so we have this, if we're saying this is our uh, 12 gauge wire, if you look at smaller gauge wire, it is a lot tighter, there is a lot less material in it, it can carry a lot less current because it has a higher resistance and therefore heats up faster. Now. The problem with this is that, again, our 12 gauge wire is actually thicker than our PCB. Let's just quickly draw a little PCB on here. So let's just say, vaguely to scale, that's our PCB versus our wire. Now, yes, the wire does have a little bit of shielding in it. So you've got, you know, yay much copper or wire running through the middle of it. However, the PCB does not have solid copper. It is mostly fiberglass. The copper is kind of like little tracks running on the edges here like this. This is being a kind of midway cut through a PCB and usually for signaling tracks and things they wouldn't even be this big. This is just kind of blown up for uh, purpose of demonstration but you can very clearly see that our wire here is going to have way more current carrying capacity than our PCB. Now to get around this I have actually designed these PCBs slightly differently. Normally you would just run a single line, like you wanted to connect this hole to all of these holes. You literally just run like a line like this. But obviously that's gonna be really thin and really thin, like really thin in depth and really thin in line width. So I haven't done that. You can actually see there is a line running down here and across there because all of this is a big copper patch. All of this bottom section is a big copper patch and that there is a copper patch. And I've done that on both sides, which means that rather than having just kind of this, what I've done is I've basically gone and made big, long, wide copper tracks. They're still really shallow in the actual material, and this is actually something that you can change when you're getting PCBs made, but for these ones, for this particular instance, I decided to go the regular amount of copper just to make sure that this will work even if you mess it up and tell PCB way that you want the thinnest amount of copper that this is still going to current carry correctly. Now it should because I do have like I said a decent thick track everywhere for my current carrying capacity but I do want to test that and so that is what today is about. We are going to wire one of these up and I have an idea for a new arm for the YOLO flipper. So we're going to give this a stress test by literally putting power in here, a switch in here, and then the weapon ESC all the way out this edge. So the current has to go through the longest path to get to the actual ESC. Soldering these actually turned out to be pretty quick and easy. I was kind of worried it wasn't going to be that easy to do because big plates of copper in a PCB like this does usually mean that you need to add a lot more heat into the joints to get them to work, but these all seem to go together pretty well. And now that it's done, uh, it is still very, very hot. I mean, I had to pump a ton of heat into this still, but 
No more than I would usually do for uh, soldering XT60s, because that is what these are right now. I will say these are a little bit crooked. They don't sit exactly flat or straight. That is because I was using uh, vice grips here, like helping hands. Uh, to try and hold everything in place and they're not the most accurate accurate you can see this one is kind of Tilted this way a little bit if I wanted to do this properly I could probably like 3d print a jig or something. Okay PCB is now cool, which means that we need to uh, Prep our patient for surgery because we are going to put in a brand new lifting arm This is something that uh, was actually commented by one of you on the build video which was to make a straight arm for this particular flipper because the kind of bend here does mean that we have a much, much shorter front arm. Uh, realistically, it would actually be better to have this entire structure move backwards and I wanna do testing on that in the near future or in the future at some point. Uh, but for today, this is what we're gonna do. This basically gives us almost a one-to-one -one between our pullback point and our flipper point. It also gives us further out. Uh, I don't know, we'll, we'll see basically, but it will be a good test of our uh, system here because it will actually draw a, well, it should draw plenty of current uh, from the motor as we try and do this. Anyway, the first step is actually gonna be to release the spring tension that is currently holding the arm up, which is literally just an elastic band hidden under this particular panel here, this top section. Comes off pretty easily, yep, just like that. And then there is an elastic band all the way back here, which when we release that, uh, does the thing and releases the arm. So there we go. Now we just need to get this bolt out of here, which, oh, this could be more trouble than I was thinking. All right, half a second, I'll get that out. Hey, now that is looking a whole lot better actually, because we've got a whole lot more range of motion out of this. Uh, this might actually be the go. We may just literally move the entire system back a little bit uh, so that the front wheels are kind of in front of this axle point uh, and use something like this. This straight bar definitely seems to be doing the job because uh, look at that, that is so, so much more angled than we were getting before. We were getting a tiny little pop before. Now here we're getting a decent amount of travel before we're hitting our end stop, which is really, really good. I'm very, very happy with that. Uh, and it's not actually hitting anything at the back end either, which is perfect. That is exactly what we want. Uh, so I've only got a couple of final things to do here. We're gonna run some new elastic uh, in the front to kind of get this to sit down correctly. Uh, and some new rope, that was the other point. So the rope that is on this thing already is a uh, four mil rope, it snapped. I snapped it repeatedly. I could probably try it here, but I have a feeling I'm just gonna snap it all over again. So we're gonna put on some longer stuff and hopefully the next thing you see is uh, us outside flipping.
<laughs> yes! What? The fact that literally all we needed was to cut one singular straight bit of metal uh, to have this boy work is wild to me. Uh, that worked out amazingly well, actually, on both fronts here. So not only did we get a flip with this new arm, which, by the way, we can do better than this new arm. This new arm is just uh, one that I very, very quickly threw together. It is a one and a half to one gear ratio, so it's actually still slowing down the tip speed down here. If we move the arm back, we can use a similar piece of metal, but the actual gear ratio will probably speed up the tip. Uh, and the brushless motor at the back here is showing no signs of having not enough power for this. So we were getting some good flips there and the motor was not struggling at all. So. Yeah, we can definitely improve this. A version two of this is definitely going to come. We're going to move the uh, flipping axle further back in the robot. That will adjust this angle here. We will get better flips. I promise you this is going to work really, really well. I'm very, very keen for that. The other thing that worked really, really well was this PCB. Uh, I was hitting this motor hard, there were certain points where it was getting all the way down and I was just jamming it so that the motor stalled out and drew as much current as it possibly could. Yes, the VEX will only allow it to draw that kind of level of current for a short amount of time, but that was giving good voltage spikes through the PCB and at no point did this PCB ever get like hot to the touch or anything. It actually worked out super, super well. So especially with the fact that there is an onboard uh, link in here. I think I am going to use this for this robot uh, for the foreseeable future. We'll see how we go uh, after this point, but yeah, I think this might be my go-to for power distribution for robots for a little while because that worked out pretty, pretty well. Uh, anyway, this has been a great video. So many things have worked. Uh, that I did not expect, so I'm, I'm very happy with that. I hope you've enjoyed that one, and I will see you in the next video.